Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're gonna to talk about Adobe Lightroom. Adobe Lightroom is a program I use every single day to tone photos, to edit my images, deliver to clients, anything you wanna do. Uh, I'm gonna try to take you from zero to 60. If you have no experience using Lightroom, this is a video for you. If you're a Lightroom expert though, this is totally gonna to be novice. Lightroom is used to import, uh, edit, tone, deliver. Uh, you can even do book layouts. Basically, Lightroom can be used to do anything you need to do to a photograph inside of your computer. Um, its real strength, though, is in archiving and managing a lot of photographs and being able to sort through and find those photographs very easily. Uh, that's the real power of Lightroom versus Photoshop. Uh, one downfall of it over Photoshop is definitely the heavy creative things you can do in Photoshop or maybe a little limited. Um, if you're trying to add goalposts to a photo or um, you know, clone out everything under the sun, it's not really the program for you. What this is more for is uh, toning, which is like curves, contrasts, white balance, things like that. Basically all your Adobe Raw stuff you would do. That's all really great in here. And in addition to that, like I said, sorting, organizing, uh, and just managing thousands of photographs over the years that you continue to do photography. So let's jump into the program. I'm gonna show you around a little bit uh, and kind of give you some ideas of what I like to click and point around to in my navigation of the workflow. So by default, this is roughly what you would see in when you open up Lightroom. On the left side, you kind of see more organizational items. Um, it has your file structure going on over here in the folder section. Um, your catalog, which is kind of like the phone book for all of the photographs inside of Lightroom. Uh, so it has that marked here. Um, collections, this is something based on metadata that you can do within Lightroom. So these aren't actual folders like you have up here. Collections are basically photographs you've selected and grouped together that might be across multiple folders or based on metadata, smart presets. Um, below that is published services, um, your import and export. On the bottom is uh, your film strips. So you can kind of scroll through and see all your photographs. So say for instance, I made this photograph big. I can still scroll left to right at the bottom and kind of go through like a film strip. Uh, above this though, we have the filters. So we can filter out photographs based on what they're marked with. So for instance, star rating um, or color ratings. Um, so we will only see the photographs that are marked those colors, for instance. So the information on the right side changes based on which module you are in. So currently being in the library module, you have an option of all different kind of metadata items you'd have. Uh, mine's collapsed right now because there's some private information in there from this assignment, but uh, that is where you'd find your metadata and be able to enter or edit that metadata per photo. If we were to go up here in the top right though, we can change modules. Um, the most common you're gonna use are library, which is used for sorting through photographs and finding things. Develop is for editing your photographs. And inside of the develop module, we have access to what might look pretty familiar if you've ever used Camera Raw. Uh, we have everything from uh, tone adjustments up here, tone curve, uh, HSL, which makes a, individual adjustments to certain color items, uh, split toning, which is basically kind of gets you some of those film looks where the shadows versus highlights have a color added. Great way to get sepia tones and things like that if you do black and whites. Uh, sharpening, noise reduction, uh, your built-in lens corrections. Uh, basically everything you'd see in Camera Raw is all laid out here in these modules on the right side. On the top right we have the histogram and below that we have localized adjustments in the crop tool. So for instance you can go over here and you could uh, burn down this side of the photograph with a brush tool. Um, again, just like you could in Camera Raw. Uh, on the left though, we have the crop tool, so we can crop and straighten our photograph uh, however you'd like. You can cycle through the overlays by holding Option and clicking the O key. Uh, there's a bunch of them to choose from. So that's a basic overview of the program. Library is where you're gonna sort and find photographs and kind of move things around, kind of like you would go through a book of prints. Uh, and then develop is where you're actually gonna do your toning. Um, that is where you adjust your color, contrast, all those things like you would an Adobe Camera Raw when you brought a photo into Photoshop. So to import photographs, you're gonna do that from the library module. In the bottom left, we're gonna click the import button. And that's gonna bring up the import dialog. What's really nice about this is we have a lot of options of what we can do right when we're importing the photographs. At the top, we have some options here that are pretty obvious, but I'll explain them quickly. Copy as DNG would copy the file and convert it to an Adobe DNG file, which is a universal RAW format. Copy would take the photographs from wherever they are located now 
leave them there and then also move them to the new location that you specify. Add would leave the photographs where they are at on your hard drive and then just add them to Adobe Lightroom. Um, I personally use Move and I let Lightroom organize and sort all of my photographs by date. Um, the reason I do this is because I use metadata that I add to the photograph to sort and find files. I find that way easier because I'm not then sorting through a file structure to find every photograph ever. So when I'm photographing things, when I go into the computer, I can add in like sunset or sports or basketball or whatever kind of keywords like that to the files. And then later I can just search for those keywords or a person's name or a location or city and I can find all that information later. I'll have another video about photo mechanic and how I do all that at another date. You can do it in the library module though of Lightroom when you ingest or later down the road. On the right side of the import screen, we can set where our files are being renamed. Um, if we want to apply any develop settings like a preset you have, maybe you're doing weddings and you have this certain funky thing you want to do to them all, you can apply that right when you import them. You can also set your file destination um, and basically all the things you'd want to have when you're ingesting photographs. Um, for me, I'm going to uncheck all these and just import a couple of these um, just to have something to play with. So once we've hit that import button, these photographs are now attached to our Lightroom catalog, which again is like the phone book for all these photographs. Also, depending on which option you chose, they've either been copied, moved, add, or copied as DNG uh, to the location you specified. Again, I use move, so they are now in a folder structure organized by Lightroom. So I think this is a pretty important point to stop and talk about. So Lightroom doesn't work like uh, Apple Finder would, or Windows Explorer, um, or even Adobe Bridge, or Photo Mechanic. Lightroom works off of a catalog, and a catalog is basically like a phone book to locate all the photographs that you're using inside of Lightroom. So in, instead of just having your file structure by default, and you click and point through all those, Lightroom basically has a catalog that like knows everything about all those photographs, and sorts them that way. Now that means that they can be located across multiple hard drives, they can be located on one hard drive, um, they can be basically sorted and organized any which way you want. Personally what I do is have them move when I import them to a organized file structure done by Lightroom. You can just do that by organ and your file destination, just put it into dated folder. Um, but if you want to leave them in place, like say you import and manage all of your folders differently, you can just use the add feature. And again, Lightroom is basically just pointing to those photographs. It doesn't care where you store them or how you store them. Um, it's just pointing to all of them and making sure that Lightroom as a program can find them, you know, sort the adjustments made to it, all of those beautiful things. But again, think of catalog like a, I guess it's like an old Sears catalog, but like a phone book basically knows and points to each one of those things, and they are different than your file structure and your organization method. So now that I got these photographs imported, um, you can see over here on the left side, they're imported by date. So for me, it goes by year, then inside of that has the month, then inside of that has the days. I only keep a couple of folders on my local hard drive when I'm working, and then I dump them to an archive catalog. Another thing I'll cover in another video. Now that these photographs are imported, you could go through on the right side and add your metadata. Uh, I would suggest this on library. You can build presets with saving commonly used information like your name, uh, website, um, stuff like that. Or if you photograph at a similar location over and over, which a lot of people do, um, you could save a preset for that location. Um, or you could save one for landscape photography or wildlife photography or sports or whatever. You can just save them and then that metadata is stored in there and then no matter what, you can find the photographs based on that information. Um, I'm going to skip right to the develop module because my metadata is already in place. Now once we're in here, we can do any number of things to these photographs. Number one I'm going to say is I like to get these bars out of the way. So these little arrows at the top and bottom, you can go and hide or show those bars. Um, I like to keep them out of the way and just keep my tools off to the right. We can use any number of things on the right side to adjust this photograph. Um, like in my other YouTube video, we can hold down the option key to get a little more information about what is going on. If you want to see that tip, it's on my YouTube channel. But we can go through and adjust this photograph, do whatever we need to do. I'm just making a quick series of edits. We can use the crop tool up here. Uh, we can use a constrained crop or we can keep it custom. So we'll bring it up to the bottom of that Bill's logo. 
and you know that looks acceptable for what we're doing so it's pretty nice to be able to use that one photograph at a time but one of the powerful things about lightroom is that we can do that to multiple photographs at once uh, when you're shooting an event or a portrait session or anything generally you're going to make a similar set of adjustments to most of those photographs so what we can do is select all or select manually a couple of photographs and then we can go over here to the right and have sync settings Inside the synchronized settings window that pops up, we're gonna have all of these develop items that are in the develop module. By checking the box, it will apply that by synchronizing. So say for instance, you made a bunch of adjustments to photographs, but you know the white balance will be different. You could uncheck white balance and it will maintain the white balance that's in place on that file already. Um, I'm gonna leave them all checked, hit synchronize, and then boom, we can see that this, the stuff from the photo on the left went to the photo on the right. Now that's not what we wanted. We wanted to go the other way. So another thing to note would be to make sure that the photograph you want the settings to come from is the primary. So if you see here, I have two photographs picked. The one that is brighter white is the one it's going to come from. So we click sync settings again, we hit synchronize and boom, this photo on the left now has all of those adjustments. And we can go in here and then make any kind of adjustments to change things back however you'd like. So now that we got these photographs toned the way we want, we could go back and change that. And that's okay, everything is non-destructive. Metaphorically, everything is on a layer above the raw photograph. None of these things are permanent, none of these things are rasterized or burned in. You can go back and change any of these things, you can change them to black and white, you can change them to color. You can do anything you want really with all of these at any time, 10 years from now or today. That's the beauty of working with RAW in Adobe Lightroom or Adobe Photoshop, things like that. You can do all this stuff in there too, but with this it's nice because it's all sorted and organized and easy to change. Uh, now we're gonna export these photographs. To do that, we're just gonna right click and go down to export. You can change just about any parameter you want. Um, I'm gonna have these go to my desktop. What's great is you can use items from your metadata to name your photographs. So for instance, by clicking down here and selecting any of these, it will auto populate that. So here we see that we're gonna use title and then up here it shows you exactly what that would end up being. Uh, so I'm gonna use the name of the event plus the sequence, hit done, we go down, we can adjust the size of our file, file settings, whatever we really want. This is all just gonna be trash, so I'm gonna leave it as it is and click export. In the top left, we'll have a progress bar, which these is pretty quick because there's only two. But in the top left, you can check to see how far your files have gone. So this is a really basic class. You just kind of get the start of Lightroom. Uh, I'm gonna dig a lot deeper in further ones, but I wanted everybody to have a little bit of a baseline to at least know how to get around the program and how to import and export some photographs and tone those photographs. Uh, if you have a Lightroom tip that you love or want me to talk about, please comment below. Uh, subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram. I'm at Brett in Real Life on Instagram. You can find me and find all my work there as well as on my website, brettcarlson.com. Really hope you guys love this. I'm real excited to do the next one. I'll talk to you later. Ah, oh, that was so dumb. Man, I hate saying bye on these videos. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to say bye or hi. Uh, but glad you liked this one. Please hit the like button below. Hit the subscribe button. Follow me on Instagram. And we'll talk again soon. Thanks so much.